Those Allegra by the doors. Becky, thank you. One more time, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we're going to start our program at this time. And, uh, well, let's talk about La Familia. 20 years we've been producing this event. And uh, here's some of our first recipients. You may recognize some of them. This is our first group that we started honoring with La Familia Heritage Award. The proclamations and certificates actually came from the governor at the time. And um, we've, we've kept that alive with uh, honoring people in our community. And um, at the last count, it's been over 100 recipients. I know there's many 
recipients here in the room of the La Familia Award. And uh, it's something we're very proud of. I don't know if we have that photo of La Familia. Here was our first La Familia Expo. Uh, I had joined the, I was on the board of directors of the River Center when it first opened. So we produced this event, 62,000 square feet. And I'll tell you, this event is a, was an amazing result, not only for our community to be there, but for the vendors. 2008, uh, the, the recession hit. We downsized like many people, and, but we've always kept it alive. And I wanna thank our sponsors. They're here tonight. Uh, my first sponsor is a, uh, an organization that's been with me for 18 years. They're a marvelous organization, the U.S. Bank. And I think you're here tonight, Joe, Jose Martinez. Jose, is Jose here? Jose Martinez from U.S. Bank. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your sponsorship. And also Comcast. Comcast is a great supporter of this program. And uh, I really enjoyed working with them. They understand our communities. They understand that there's a, a value of working with Latinos. And um, last but not least, our good friends from NAREP. NAREP Twin Cities, are they here tonight? And um, NAREP stands for the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. And they're uh, connected to the uh, national organization. So proud to be working with, with these folks. And, uh, and last but not least, uh, Latino American Today. We're gonna start our program uh, tonight He's a good friend of mine. You just heard him perform. And I'm speaking about Johnny Holiday. Well, Johnny is a retired U.S. Air Force veteran, an excellent multi-instrumentalist and performer. Johnny came to Minnesota direct from San Antonio, Texas. He had the great opportunity to, to produce a military career as well as a music career. He had the honor to perform for many people all over the world, touring with the Air Force show band Tops in Blue. They performed in over 20 countries and 47 states. Johnny has also performed the national anthem in many sporting events from the NFL, NASCAR, NCAA and the NBA. He released two full jazz CDs. During a landmark moment, far from his loved ones and family, Johnny was asked to share his musical gift with the troops and perform on the bass. It was then that he finally found the truth of his life path. Johnny is a man of deep faith. He knew that his military career and love of country were very important to him. And he finally recognized he equally loved his music. I wanted to introduce at this time, Johnny Holiday. Johnny. Johnny, in recognition of your love and service to your country with the United States Air Force, also for your gift of performing uplifting music that has raised the spirits of people throughout the world. You are a source of pride. So with the appreciation of the Latino community in Minnesota, his commendation is presented to Johnny Holiday, U.S. veteran, musician extraordinaire. I want to thank you very much, brother, for allowing Willie and I to share with you uh, some of our talent. Um, uh, this is really was unexpected, and I appreciate you. You're always motivated to do things for the community, and I, I, can, I can see why a lot of people, so many people love you. Um, it is true, I was in the Air Force, uh, but I didn't play in the Air Force band because I like guns too much. So being deployed, I got to do some things that I, I've always dreamt of doing. But on the other side, I got to share a lot of music talent 
with all kinds of uh, national individuals from all over the, the world. And uh, I'm just grateful. I thank God for the opportunity to allow me to continue to share even after I've gotten out of the military and uh, to share with you all this evening. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. And, and uh, during Hispanic Heritage Month, we, we talk about our contributions. We talk about our success as a community. But we also have to talk about the issues. There's issues in our community, ladies and gentlemen. And before COVID, Latinos in Minnesota had the worst high school dropout rate in the country. But one of the groups I've worked with for years has been ALMAS, a Latino youth group that is headquartered at Two Rivers High School in West St. Paul. The idea for ALMAS is goes back to 2001. Rob Hansen was a Spanish teacher at uh, Two Rivers, and he, he, he based this group on a master thesis in which he created a plan to help keep Latinos in high school. He interviewed over 80 dropouts that helped him develop this thesis. Today, more than 200 students belong to the award-winning Elmas Latino Group, which is directed by Robert Hansen. Two years ago, I'm sorry, 2019, we awarded District 197 and Elmas. They graduated 90% Latino students, higher than the general market. So tonight, I want to have Rob Hansen come up to the stage for the award and bring your students, Rob. In recognition of Alma's, the Latino youth group, and your mission to bring change in your school and the greater opportunity through community service projects regular parent contact and outreach opportunities. Also for your efforts to create and foster Latino pride, increase post-secondary participation, and educate community leaders about the dangers of tobacco and electronic cigarettes. Therefore, with the appreciation of the Latino community in Minnesota, this accommodation is presented to Almas, Anglos, Latinos motivated for success. Rob, congratulations. So in regards to those videos, they're professionally made. They are in over 80 local markets of Minnesota. The St. Paul School District is now picking up those videos as well. Um, and I'd like to introduce you to my vice president, and she'll add some words. We would love to thank you so much for this award. We are glad to get this message out to everyone because we believe it's important. Tobacco companies are targeting us and other minority groups, so we are glad to have this opportunity to speak up for our community. Once again, thank you, once again, thank you for this award. It means a lot to us. It's amazing that you know, these young students have visibility. Uh, it builds up uh, a, a, uh, a raw emotion of honor that I think we need them to lead on. So Rob, we're with you. We thank you for all your success and we look forward to much more of it. Our, our next recipient is a, an amazing organization. In the early 1900s, the East Lake Street Corridor in Minneapolis was in deep decline with empty storefronts, crime, and more businesses fleeing the area. 
1992, community members Juan Linares, Ramon Leon, and Sal Miranda began a community organizing process at Sagrado Corazon, a church in South Minneapolis. And they formed an economic development committee. The first project they worked on was the formation of Mercado Central, a marketplace of 35 Latino businesses at the corner of East Lake and Bloomington. They opened the doors of the Mercado in the summer of 1997. Tonight, we want to honor this amazing group who celebrated their 25th anniversary in 2022. In recognition of the Mercado Central in Minneapolis, a thriving marketplace of Latino businesses that is a testament to the spirit and pride of the Latino community. Also for providing this amazing shopping experience to all communities in our Twin Cities metro area. Tonight, we celebrate the owners of Mercado Central and their American dream. Therefore, with the appreciation of the Latino community in Minnesota, this commendation is presented to Cooperative Mercado Central Inc. Juan, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening to everybody. Um, I just want to also recognize a really good partner in this crime, which is John Flory, which is right next to our entrepreneurs. I think John was the brains in terms of financing and finding ways to have um, an immigrant community to have access to capital. And that was that was a real true partner that helped us all the way. It is a privilege to stand before you to accept this award on behalf of the families who have truly been the heart and soul of the Mercado Central. As we gather here to commemorate an important anniversary, the theme that resonates the most is familia, family. It was these very families who, in 1996, believed in themselves and invested in the Mercado Central Economic Development Project. Since that pivotal moment, we've grown into a symbol of success, a benchmark for the reinvesting in the Lake Street Commercial Corridor. That award, this award doesn't just recognize us, it celebrates the dedication and resilience of every family who pour their sweat, dreams, and love into this place. As we move forward, let's just remember that the power of family and the legacy we're creating together will continue to make Mercado Central a beacon of Latino heritage and in economic prosperity in our community. Con una inmensa gratitud, nuevamente, gracias. Gracias a ustedes, hermanos. Por favor, vamos a reconocer a los empresarios del Mercado Central. We have to recognize our members of the Mercado Central. Thank you. Thank you. Here in Minnesota, we have a proud tradition of Latinos serving as peace officers. And we, as citizens, and me personally, I admire a person who chooses that career and decides that they would give their lives for our safety. So tonight, we're gonna to be honoring a peace officer here in our Twin Cities metropolitan area, but also outstate Minnesota, where we see larger Latino communities springing up throughout the state. We think it's important to know that there are Latino 
peace officers' leaderships outstate. So we're going to be honoring two of our, our heroes, if you will. Um, Pamela Berrigan was born in Ecuador, graduated college, and moved to Minnesota in search of a new life and career. She worked a variety of jobs and became deeply involved in her new community, which led to a job with the St. Paul Police Department as a community liaison officer, opening a new career for Pamela. In 2005, she was promoted to sergeant, becoming the first Latina police sergeant in St. Paul history. Among her many assignments, Among her many assignments were downtown beat patrol supervisor, family and sexual violence investigator, juvenile unit, gang and gang investigator, training unit supervisor of the background and recruitment divisions, and finally, the community engagement unit, where she oversaw a new initiative for non-traditional candidates interested in law enforcement. In 2017, Pamela was promoted to commander, working in citywide services and later assigned to the Community Partnerships Unit. In February 2023, Pamela was appointed as the new Deputy Chief of the Community Engagement Division, becoming the first Latina in St. Paul Police Department's history to obtain this rank. Pamela is a proud member of the National Latino Peace Officers Association. That group is here tonight, Rigo O'Geary, and all his wonderful members are here tonight. So in recognition for representing law enforcement with the utmost honor and dignity making the city of St. Paul safe for all communities. Also for your amazing effort of rising through the ranks of the St. Paul Police Department, becoming deputy chief, the first Latina in the department's history to obtain this rank. Therefore, with the appreciation of the Latino community in Minnesota, this commendation is presented to Pamela Berrigan, Deputy Chief, St. Paul Police Department. Pamela, congratulations. It is a great honor to receive the 2023 La Familia Latino Her Heritage Award. This award has a special meaning because it's presented during the celebration of the National Hispanic Heritage Month. I am very proud of the countless contributions of more than 60 million Latinos, Hispanics people in our country. We embody the best of our values, including commitment to family, commitment to faith, and commitment to our country, our home country now and the countries that we come from. I had the privilege to work for the St. Paul Police Department for the last 27 years, and I have seen our growth. I proudly represent my community and I proudly represent my department. We work together. There's no opposition. We have to be together. I want to thank God for being my strength and my guidance through my life. I'm very grateful to have a support system, including my family, including Jim, my husband, and my National Latino Peace Office Association, who are in the house, Latinos. Ooh, where are you? <laughs> So let's keep working and representing. Muchas gracias. Yeah. And Jose Pelez was born in the city of Manta, Ecuador. In 2002, he moved with his family to Winona County in Minnesota. He has served with the city of St. Charles, Minnesota Police Department for the last 15 years. And on February 2021, he was appointed chief of police, the county and department's first Latino police chief. As a bilingual chief, 
for a city with a growing population. He implemented Mi Voz, the first Latino community outreach program. He has introduced the department's presence on social media and revamped the department's mission. He is also a proud member of National Latino Peace Officers Association. In recognition of your commitment and dedication to law and order in your community by serving as a peace officer for the city of St. Charles, Minnesota, and in 2021, becoming the county and department's first Latino police chief. Also for your love and service to your country with the U.S. Air Force Reserves. Therefore, with the appreciation of the Latino community in Minnesota, this commendation is presented to Jose Pelez, Chief of Police, the City of St. Charles, Minnesota. Jose, congratulations. First of all, thank you very much, Rick, for this award. It really means a lot to me. Very honored and humbled to receive this award tonight. I wanted to say thank you too to my, uh, my family present here tonight, my parents, the uh, Tirene, Tialetti. <laughs> my wife, was, of course, Casera, she's here tonight. No, thank you very much. I am really honored of receiving this uh, award tonight, especially along with other, uh, one of the finest uh, leaders that I know that I've had a chance to work with. Uh, Deputy Chief Barragan, uh, which I didn't know uh, until just recently uh, when she was appointed as a uh, Deputy Chief with St. Paul's PD that uh, she was a fellow compatriota equatoriana and the highest uh, ranking uh, Latina in the state of Minnesota, a police officer. Again, good job. Orgullo equatoriano, right? <laughs> Also, Johnny, where you at? There's Sarge. <laughs> I've known Johnny for a little while, so Sarge, this is my honor to uh, serve him with you, sir. Congratulations to this award, too. Our law enforcement profession has gone through a lot in the last three years. You know, we first got hit with COVID, then we got hit with uh, civil unrest, and then with uh, defund the police. And uh, we're still recovering. We're still struggling through all that. It's, uh, it's been very difficult, uh, especially for smaller departments like St. Charles, you know, where we're having uh, a hard time recruiting people to do this job. So, um, you know, we lost, uh, we lost uh, a lot of bad cops, which is fine. We want to get rid of the bad cops. We want to get rid of the uh, bad apples, right? But we also lost good cops, right? The PTSD to just, they just did not, did not want to do the job anymore uh, just because of, you know, the lack of support and uh, from some of the community members, some of the uh, elected officials. But uh, it's, it's been a struggle. But, you know, this, this award is it's about, it's about leadership, right? So good leaders, you'll find them during uh, uh, difficult times, right? During this challenging times, that's where we need strong leadership, people that will lead their, pe their employees, their people through all these difficult times, uh, no matter what, and achieve their goals that, that, that you set yourself. Uh, thank you very much, appreciate it. Well, what a night. Our, our company, Aguilar Productions, uh, we have produced Hispanic marketing conferences now for 27 years. Yeah, and um, pleased to say we're recognized nationally and we've had so many sponsors over the years. Why? They want to reach the 2.5 trillion dollars U.S. Hispanic market. Again, have a safe drive home and God bless you. Thank you. <laughs>